Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a uh, manga that I read. I am back on that manga grind. Uh, and I wanted to revisit a, a series that I've been exploring. Um, uh, one that came highly recommended by friends and is about spies and secret police agents. I am referring to volume three of Spy Family, uh, which was written by Tetsuya Endo and published in 2019. Take a look at your on the front cover. What a hot tamale, if I, if I do say so myself. I've talked about Tetsuya Endo on this channel before, so I don't need to go into that great of detail. He's written manga for, uh, for his entire career, uh, and some of it has been pretty successful, but I think the most successful has been the Spy Family series, which was uh, even turned into anime in the process. Uh, and I've been enjoying it. Uh, it has, uh, like, Volume 1 was really good. Uh, volume 2 was also good, but it felt a bit lighter in terms of what uh, Indo was trying to explore in Volume 1. Uh, but I do have some good things to say about Volume 3. So without further ado, let's talk about this series. I, of course, will spoil this because it's Volume 3 already. Um... But uh, I, I, I highly suggest you go read Volume 1 if you don't want uh, to be spoiled and then just make your way through the series. And so without further ado, I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Volume 3 of Spy Family picks up where Volume 2 left off. Uh, yours brother, Yuri, has shown up. Uh, he is secretly a secret police agent, but Yor, uh, Yor doesn't know that. Uh, and neither does Lloyd. Uh, but he is uh, showing up at dinner in order to uh, get a feel for who Lloyd is because he didn't know about this marriage that, is, that had apparently taken place. Uh, and he wants to give his uh, approval of, of the relationship. And so Lloyd and Yor are having dinner with Yuri. Yuri is very suspicious of Lloyd uh, and is trying to throw him off guard, although it's not working on Lloyd. Uh, and Lloyd suspects that, uh, that Yuri might be a spy or working for some government agency in some capacity because some of the answers that he's giving to questions come out of the spy handbook. So Lloyd is, is uh, suspicious there. Uh, and the dinner ends with uh, Yor accidentally punching Yuri um, uh, after he requested that uh, Lloyd and Yor kiss to, to prove themselves. Uh, and then Yuri just runs away without fully giving his approval of the, of the relationship. Uh, and Yor at this point is beginning to have doubts about her ability to be a wife or to fulfill the wife role. She feels that she's failing and she also feels that she's failing Anya in some way. Although uh, Lloyd reassures her that she's doing a good job. It's just sometimes we put these uh, um, sort of expectations on ourselves that we can't really fulfill. Um, but, but despite that, uh, Lloyd uh, spies on Yor. He places a tracker on her and follows her uh, and then dresses up in a disguise in order to tri uh, trip her up and, and get her to think or get her to reveal who she might actually be. Although it's, it's very clear that she uh, she's not really um, working with Yuri in any capacity. And Lloyd uh, is reassured by that. But uh, he doesn't, again, he doesn't know that Yor is actually an assassin. Short while later, Anya has a dodgeball game. And there's a rumor going around that uh, whoever wins the dodgeball game will get a stellar star. Uh, which, uh, if you get eight of those, it gets you into the advanced classes, which will get uh, Lloyd, Twilight, um, and uh, Anya closer to Desmond, who uh, Lloyd is trying to track. And uh, they, they uh, help Anya practice and get better at dodgeball. But what really sets her over the edge is that she can read minds. So she knows where people are going to throw the ball. And uh, she manages to do pretty well. But when she throws the ball at the last remaining opponent, uh, it, it doesn't get that far because she's not very strong. She's just a small little uh, seven or eight year old, I think. And then, or six year old, I think it is. And, and then uh, that, that person throws the ball at her and she's out. But it's revealed that nobody is going to get 
get a star because this is just a PE class. And a, a short while later, um, Lloyd and Anya go and do community service as they hear that will also help them get some stars. Uh, and <laughs> Anya proves that she's not very good at, at helping with community service. But she does uh, hear uh, when she's reading minds that someone has uh, fallen into the uh, rehabilitation pool and is drowning. And so she leads Lloyd and others to the pool without revealing how she knows that someone's in the pool. And then uh, they, uh, Lloyd and um, Anya manage to save this person, which does in fact get her at least one star. And so she's making her way there in order to uh get um get help her early uh, help Lloyd her adoptive father get close to to uh to Desmond uh although some of the other school people um spread rumors about her again cuz she seems a bit un unusual and uh, uh uh, as a re as a reward, because Anya hears that like you get a reward if you if you get stars. Anya tells uh, Lloyd and Yor that she wants a dog, uh, and it does seem like they are going to get her one as the story comes to a close. And then there's a bonus mission where Lloyd and Yor go on a date, and then one of Lloyd's um, uh, co-agents, who he hired as a babysitter to watch Anya, like they, they track <laughs> Lloyd uh, at the request of Anya, and uh, Anya helps foil uh, an attacker who would try to uh, hurt Yor um, because she had assassinated some of his friends, <laughs> and she uses that with her mind and whatnot. So uh, Anya is proving to be very helpful there, um, and, but that's just a bonus mission. I, I don't know if that's really canon or not in this uh, particular story. In terms of analysis, there is a fair bit to talk about with volume three here. Uh, again, as I've uh, been uh, talking about in the first two videos, uh, Endo is talking about roles and expectations here uh, because Lloyd and Yor are expected to play certain roles. Uh, Lloyd was tasked with creating a family to get closer to this Desmond character. And so he's uh, adopted Anya and then recruited Yor on the cause, although she doesn't know the exact um, uh, goal that he's trying to pursue here. Uh, and so they're performing in these certain roles to accomplish what they hope to set out to do. Yor in particular, like, is worried because if someone believes that her marriage is a sham or anything like that, she might get accused of being a spy, which will garner some scrutiny on her, and maybe people might find out that she's actually an assassin. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on Yor, and there's like additional pressure because society has a lot of expectations of women as it pertains to being that of a wife or a mom. And so Yor just feels like she isn't enough um, at at this point. Like she's she's trying her best, but she's she feels like she isn't fulfilling the role as best as she could. But Lloyd does have some pretty good advice for her. Allow me to read you an interesting quote from this. The way I see it, Yor, it's not just us. In most of the families out there, everyone's playing a part. They tell themselves this is how wives are supposed to act, or this is what parents do. Striving to live up to one's ideals is an admirable thing, of course, but when those ideals start to constrict you, it's easy to lose sight of who you are and where your true strengths lie. Which is a very uh, interesting quote, which applies not only to this situation, but I but I'm sure to the people you know out there who are reading this who might place these constraints on themselves to behave in a certain way in a certain role, and it doesn't need to be that way because that can cause additional stress. Like even if you're just pretending to uh, like to be a, a role like that places a lot of burden on you to perform in a, in a certain way. Like a lot of people have expectations of how a role should be, and there's many different ways you can be a wife or a mother or a father or anything like that. So even though um. Even though, like, like Yor is faking it here, this this advice applies to many other people out there, which I like that um, Endo is is kind of saying that. Uh, but he, there's still breathing room for Yor. Like, I like how Lloyd is reassuring this woman, even though he doesn't really have to do that. There's also elements of dramatic tension, as I, as I've noted before, especially dramatic irony. Both Lloyd and Yor don't want Yuri finding out their secret, particularly in this volume. Again, like Lloyd is a secret agent, but nobody knows that. Yor is um, 
uh, an assassin, but she doesn't want Yuri especially to find out. And Yuri is a um, is a secret police agent, uh, and he doesn't want Yuri finding out about that. But also, he doesn't want Lloyd finding out about that either. And the way that uh, Endo you know illustrates all of this is having characters say one thing and then having thought bubbles um, or thought panels, which indicate the, the 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 fear of being found out, the fear of discovery, and the added tension in the situation. Situation, which I think he does a really good job of of adding to, and it's it's again the continued irony that the audience knows all of this, but the characters and the story don't. Although Anya does does know, and it uh, it provides a little bit of humor to see her reaction uh, to all of this. Now, while I do think the dramatic tension is good, I feel like the rom- romantic tension isn't really there um, because Lloyd and Yor are supposedly in a relationship. And it's been three volumes and no one's really put this relationship to the test yet. There there was an instance in this volume where uh, Yuri was like, Yor, you have to kiss Lloyd in order to prove this relationship. But I feel like um, Endo didn't take this as far as it, it could really have gone, um, sort of building up the... This fake relationship between the two, and maybe showing that it could develop into something else. Given this is volume three, but um, you know, three volumes in, you have to do something with this relationship. It feels like there's, it feels like Endo's leaving a lot on the table here. I also like the uh, elements of humor in in this story. Uh, Endo does a really good job of. of hyping up the uh, absurdity of the situation. Uh, again, Anya's innocence is, is featured here. Uh, her just like wondering a lot about uh, Lloyd's spy job that, that she knows uh, and, and the wonder of like... Uh, of, of what her mother does and how she frequently like beats up uh, beats up all of these these supposedly bad men. Um, but another thing that's very funny is the character Bill Watkins in in uh, this volume. Uh, during the dodgeball game, a huge child shows up, or what appears to be a, a huge man who all the students note is like a, a third grader or something like that, uh, even though he clearly doesn't look like <laughs> like a third grader. Uh, and they say like, oh, that's Bill Watkins. He he, he's won a lot of dodgeball tournaments, and uh, he's he's highly regarded. He's going to be hard to beat here. And another student is just like, they have dodgeball tournaments and, in elementary school? That's that's strange. Uh, so just the absurdity of a, of a giant, you know, uh, elementary school student uh, who's clearly an adult <laughs> uh, creating a, a, a bit of a... a, a obstacle for Anya's success here. Anyway, those are my thoughts on volume three of Spy Family, a fun series so far. Uh, it, it, it's um, very entertaining, and I and I like where Endo is heading with this, but I do think that uh, a little bit more needs to be done. We're, we're at three volumes in, and he needs to up the stakes, add a little bit more tension, uh, especially um, have your or like Twilight suspect one another, or um, add a little bit more romantic tension there it's just something extra to to really get the series going because it feels a bit stale as it's as it's moving on it's still fun but like it, it, I, it needs to like go in a certain direction at this point otherwise it just feels a bit uh, repetitive um, so I'm hoping for a little bit more and I still recommend this to you out there if you're interested in uh, an exciting manga to read uh, if you read this before, you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. I would love to have a discussion with you about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, or subscribe uh, so that other people can not find out about this author or this series that they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and spy-like travels. Farewell.